I was wondering about look-alike or knockoff designs in fountain pens, and what were your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts? Well, I have some thoughts. Give them to I us, I thought I'd please. like to share. That's why I took this question. This ah. is like, this kind of question, whenever I get something like this, I'm always like, ooh. Let me sink my teeth into this I'm one. I'm always like, ooh, this is, a, this is a touchy one. You know, it's like I, I don't grab one of these every single week, but every now and then there's one that I'm like, yeah, this could be a... This could be one where I'm like walking a line. Well, let's you know, jump in. Know, something about that just makes me feel like I'm alive, you know, <laughs> in my own sad way. Living life on the as edge. a pen guy, but uh, no, seriously though. I mean, um, this is a, this is one of those things where it's not a clearly like black and white issue. There's a no. lot of gray here, um, and just to be quite honest, it's tough because w if we are honest with ourselves, fountain pens have been around for 150 years. There's only so many things you can do on a pen to make it completely unique and different. Yeah. So like there's always going to be some overlap in inspired elements and borrowed technology right. that's going to happen in pens. You know what I mean? And let, that kind of thing happens all the time. But just when, j as with any industry, there's a line between inspiration and plagiarism, right? Exactly. And I think that's what we're talking about here. So, um, you know, I don't know the exact nature and intent of your question, but I'm going to interpret it as I will. I'll say there's definitely some room for debate here, and I think that's okay. Well, there's always room for debate. Yeah. Um, so kind of where I fall with this kind of thing, and you can see this reflected in the products that we carry, clear knockoffs are not cool. You know, like literally there's pens on eBay that are being advertised as Mont Blancs or whatever. They have the white star on top. They, they rip off the trademark logos and stuff, and they try to sell them close to the price, usually discounted because they want to move them quickly, but somewhere near the price and they just want to get a quick buck. That's a bummer. I mean, it's just straight up lying. That's, That's all it is. Yeah. It's lying products. Yeah. That's not cool. Everybody is pretty clear on that's not cool. It's very shady and, you know, very clear about that. So that's not awesome. Um, knockoff designs, though, gets a, it's, it gets a little bit cloudier. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking specifically about pens like the Jinhao 599, which is the one that is clearly heavily, heavily influenced by the Lamy Safari. And that's not a design that <coughs> you're going to easily be able to draw inspiration from. Right. You're going to know. It's, 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 it's pretty unique. obvious. Yeah. Like the styling of the pen, the shape of it, even the, su the shape of the nib and everything yeah. is really close. And if you're just like, okay, they very obvious. Like anyone who's in the pen world can look at it and go, okay. They're clearly trying to make something that looks just like that pen, yeah. and you know, part of that's a cultural thing. That that's some that's more okay in some countries than others. Um, that's an interpretive kind of thing. Where I kind of come from with that is, you know, how does the original manufacturer, the original designer of that product, feel about yeah, it? Yeah, honestly, that's really the bottom line, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, do they feel like they got ripped off or not? Right. You know, and of course there's room for interpretation there as well. But like, I know Lamy is not happy <laughs> about that pen. You know, we're, we're official authorized Lamy reps, and we've talked to them specifically about that pen. And we were like, when it first came out, we were kind of like, hey guys, this, this really looks like a Safari. What do you think about this? And they were like, yeah, we're not happy about that. And I was like, okay, yeah, clearly that's not a product, you know. I kind of knew that even before I asked. And if any of the <coughs> pen companies were authorized retailers have ever asked us to not do something, we'd be like, boom, that's it. Absolutely. Okay, enough said. That's, yeah, that, that makes it very clear for us as far as carrying a product. Yeah. What's, co what's cool and what's not. Um, but I think even you as a, as a shopper, you, you can kind of tell. You oh, know, sure. you can usually tell. Sometimes, you know, if people are new into the fountain pen world, like this happens a lot, people on Reddit and stuff like that who are just getting into the fountain pen hobby, they see a pen talked about, like an, a very inexpensive pen, because I think that pen's like six or eight, ten bucks, something like that. Like it's really oh, cheap. Yeah. It's, it's really cheap. cheap. So they would look at it and go, oh, this is a really inexpensive pen. I should get into this. And then later on, they might find out, oh, this is really kind of a ripoff, but not necessarily the same. It's, it's, it's under their brand, Jin Hao. It's clearly mimicked to be like that. So it, that gets really gray. Some people are cool with it, some people are not. I know that, you know. And talking to Lamy, they're not super happy about that pen. Right. So I'm like, yeah, we're, then that's why we don't carry the 599. Um, and you know, I never even really investigated the process of doing that because we do sell Jin Hao too. So it's interesting yeah. when we have brands that are kind of overlapping like that. Um, so moving a little bit further, a little bit uh, less dark gray on the spectrum, I guess, or I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, or would you mean towards darker or away, depending on if it's getting 
I don't less know. obvious. I don't know if what this I'm, is. This isn't a black I'm and white lost, scale. I'm getting lost in the my scale own metaphor is not simply here. Black and white. <laughs> I'm getting lost in my own metaphor. Um, but think about like pens that are kind of inspired by others. Like I'm thinking about the Jinhao 159 right. and the Mont Blanc 149. Yeah, no one's looking at that thing and thinking it's a Mont Blanc. I mean, it's like clearly it's a large pen, similar in size. It clearly has the overall kind of yeah. Gen, you I know, guess if you general, saw silhouettes of them, maybe. Yeah, it would be somewhat similar. Maybe. But it's like, okay, the Mont Blanc 149, it's a gold nib, piston fill, clearly has like the white star, all the trimmings, you know. Uh, precious resin. It's close to a thousand dollars. Yeah, it's clearly a whole different league. Yeah. <coughs> the Jinhao one fifty nine. It's twelve dollars and fifty cents. Stainless steel nib, cartridge converter. It's a metal pen. It's it's not the same. It's got thing. a big wonky logo on the clip. Yeah, I think it's got like fewer fewer trim rings around the cap too. Yeah, and I know that like as far as like trademark designs and stuff, like companies like Mont Blanc have like very specific like patents and trademarks and stuff oh, yeah. on certain elements of the design. So there will be other companies that will tweak them. And you know, it's like if you look at like the Sailor King of Pens and like the um, the the or the sorry the Sailor 1911 and the Mont Blanc 149. They're pretty similar. Yeah. You know what I that, mean? That, but that, like they tweak and change that some shape different of pen things. is a popular pen shape. Absolutely. You'll see a bunch of pens over cross brands so, with that shape. So there is a very fine line there. Also, but I think a lot of it comes down to intent. And if and if Mont Blanc, you know, was adamant about getting that pen erased from existence. They could probably. They would do it. They could do it. They could probably. Yeah, do they that. have done that before in the past. They 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 are not hesitant to right. you know exercise their trademark rights, and that's totally fine. Um, but I think it has it's it's like far enough away where yeah. it's like okay, they're they're mimicking some elements of it, but it's not like an outright you know copy kind of thing. Yeah. So you know we sell that pen. Literally, very few people have ever brought up is like. Why do you carry this pen? It's clearly a Mont Blanc knockoff. I like, was gonna get a Mont Blanc, okay. but I guess I'll get this Jinhao instead. Right. So That's I think happening. like <laughs> it's the kind of thing you know that. Uh, it's hard to explain, but you know it when you see it, kind right. of thing. So that's that's where it. So we're in that gray area somewhere, you know. And we don't carry a lot of pens like that, you know. There are like pen, companies like Jinhao and Hero and some of these other ones. They have no. a lot of pens that look like other ones. Yeah, we're very intentional. About yeah. That. So we'll we we try to carry the ones that are a little more unique to to the Jinhao brand, um, but that's pretty much where we fall there. So. Um, yeah, I think that's that's kind of where we settle on it. That's that's yeah. what we use as a gauge. And in general, if we just don't feel right about it, we won't do it. Yeah, yeah. But your feedback helps a lot too. You pretty much know. If you're in the pen world a little bit, you pretty much know. 